Hey everyone, my name is Andrew Hess. Today, we're gonna edit some JSON and we're gonna do it based off this Gantt chart that we've been working on for the past two weeks. Today, we're going to edit the JSON and change the color of the bar so that it's red if it's late and if it's not, it's gonna match the theme color. Also, we are going to add our own custom field to the JSON that we got from before. So let's get into it. Let's do some pro code development today. We're gonna to do some JSON. The past two weeks, we created the scan chart in SharePoint. We made some small changes to it. We moved the task name over. Uh, we pushed out the percent side over a little bit. We then created a Power App form that looks really good. I really like the way this Power App form looks. It has our title up here. It has Project Start, Project Do on here. Um, task Start, Task Do um, has a nice progress bar instead of the actual putting in a number but today i wanted to add a little cherry on top and i wanted to do some json editing if you're going to go from low code no code to pro code doing json is a good first step json is a good first step to languages it's a good language that you can learn rather quickly and you're going to use json in cards in power automate you might use it in Power Automate to parse through things. You might use it in Power Apps. It's going to be used in Copilot Studio. So JSON is very valuable if you're going to continue in the Microsoft world. Let's kind of look at what JSON structure looks like. JSON, it's built on two structures. It says a collection of key value pairs, right? So think of like a record. So you have all of these items here that are defining what this record is. So you have title, author, publisher, and it's an order of list of values. So in our JSON, we have um, these things here. So you can see, you know, the walkthrough, how title is To Kill a Mockingbird, author is Harper Lee, published year, 1960, and then genres, and then this be an array. So it belongs, has it's a multi-select, think of it like a multi-select. And then you have a Boolean value, true, false, and then, then you have inside this, you have details, and inside of that, you have a record value. So the details has two values in the record. It has pages and publisher. That's kind of just the basics of JSON. And just looking at this, it kind of will help us with what we're going to do today. Today, what I want to do is I want to change the colors of this blue bar. So Hert, and this is based off his JSON that he created, hard-coded the color blue in here. And I don't like the blue. I want it to be the theme color. But not only do I want it to be the theme color, I want it to be red when it's late. So when an, a task is running late, I want this to turn red. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna download what's called Visual Studio Code. You can download Visual Studio Code right here. You can get a nice download. Uh, you know, Windows, Linux, Mac, however you want to use it, I'm going to take that JSON. I'm going to format my current view. And so this is what um, Hert had. And this is also saved. Um, let's see if we go to his, we can find his repository and we can get his JSON. So this is a JSON that updates to the project Gantt chart, right? So that's what this makes. I'm just going to take the entire JSON and I'm going to put it in Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to go into Visual Studio Code and I'm just going to do a, a new file, a new text file, and I'm going to say, it says up here, select a language. I'm going to select JSON. This is what we're going to write in today. And the reason I do that is so it formats it right. It knows, you know, if there's errors or not, it's going to format it, give me, you know, color coded um, curly brackets, give me, you know, color coded square brackets. This kind of helps me read the code easier. And so what I want to do now is I want to find something that I recognize in the code that I already have. And then I want to find it in the Visual Studio Code. So something that's easy for me to recognize is going to be this calendar icon. So I want to find this calendar icon in the code. So I'm going to open up the code. I'm going to open up the code 
And I'm gonna find, maybe I'll search for calendar. Let's see, calendar. Oh, icon name calendar, that could be it. Event, that's not it, maybe. Oh, icon name, event date missed. There it is, that's what I'm looking for. So this is a spot that I've now identified. I noticed that this is an icon, right? And it's displaying, if you kind of read this, it's displaying if task type is task or and task do. And so it's saying if it's less than one, which is 100%. So if it's less than 100% of the task and, or, and then th this is an or, or task type is equal to milestone and it's also less than 100% of the progress and it's due. So and it has to be due. So I'm going to take this code right here. I like this code. This code is going to help me. I'm going to use this code and I'm going to find if I scroll up a little bit where he is setting the blue color. So I need to find colors and that's normally going to be with like a number sign and you're going to find colors in here. So I'm going to search his code right here. Background color is blank. Right here, background color 007 ADB. That, so if I take this color right here, let me save. So I'm gonna open up a notepad, right? I'm just gonna put this on the side. I'm gonna save this code here on the side. This is just how I work. I'm gonna take this code and I'm gonna search for it in Google. Or you can go to Copilot. I can, you know, I could be like, what color is this? You go to Copilot, you can go to Google, right? I feel like Copilot and AI is kind of taking over. A vivid cerulean, I'm, I'm guessing that's blue. I'm guessing that is blue, right? It's a little too descriptive for me, cerulean. Yep, you get it, it's a vivid blue. Okay, so this is the blue we wanna replace. But I'm gonna take this code right here and I'm gonna replace this blue. Okay, I replaced it. So it's saying, you know, if it's, you know, late, it's not 100%, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna change it to red. I believe this is gonna be red. So I'm gonna give me a red, uh, give me a red color. So right here, we now have an orange red. I probably want more of a red red. Uh, give me, give me pure red. I want, you know, a real red in there. Now you could do this on Google if you'd like, but I'm going to use Copilot today. So, okay, I have my, my red color. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to say red, All right? So I'm just going to double check my work. I'm going to take it off, copy. I'm going to go to SharePoint in my JSON format view of SharePoint. I'm gonna paste it in. All right, so you notice we have red. It looks like it removed some of the colors, right? Because we never defined a color here. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code. And this time I want it to be a blue. So we could do blue or I think we could do black. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We can do black. Maybe let's, let's just put a couple, I don't know what color this is, but, and that's gonna change the color. We'll just put, you know, a little random color in there and we'll change the color, okay? Now, I'm gonna go back to SharePoint. I'm gonna paste it in. Okay, so I actually made it blue on accident perfectly. <laughs> so that's good, we have blue now. So when it's late, when it's late, it's red. And let's say we do this 100%, it then turns blue. So this one is not late, so it's, it's blue. So all that's working perfectly, but one thing is, is I don't want it to be blue. I want it to be the theme of my SharePoint. So you can search this out and let's see if we find here in, we have PMP examples. So let's pull this down a little bit. Here are our PMP examples and these are some background colors that we can call upon. The one that I want is probably called dark theme, dark. I want the theme. So theme, dark. This is what I want. I want the dark color of my theme. 
So I'm going to take this code right here. I'm going to go to Visual Studio Code. Right, so back to Visual Studio Code. Now you would think that it goes right here, right? You would think, okay, I put my theme in right there. But what I figured out is background color does not accept the themes from Microsoft. What does accept it is the class in the attributes class. So watch this. If I put it in here, if I put background color in there, and I put this in SharePoint, let's go back to SharePoint, and I paste it in, it doesn't accept that color. But you know what does? The, the attribute class. So now let's go back to my Visual Studio Code. Right here, I'm gonna make this blank. I'm gonna make that blank, but then in my attribute class underneath the section that I'm at, I'm going to add the MSBG color theme I actually want dark, oh, dark, right here. I want this right here, theme dark. And I'm going to put that in my attribute class here. And then I'm going to take it all again, copy. I'm going to push it out to SharePoint. And I'm going to paste it in here, preview. It's now accepting my color scheme. So it's like a dark blue, almost a black. So when I hit save, and I come back in here and let's say I change the theme. So I change the look. I go to a theme. We go to um, purple. You see, it changes the color matching the theme. If I go here, cerulean, it changes the color matching the theme. That's what I like. I, I don't want the red to change. I like the red to pop out. Okay, you know, red is bad. Even this red theme still looks good. This red means it's late. So I'm going to go back to my custom one here. So I'm now using the custom colors of my theme from the JSON. That's what I like. That's what I want to do. And so when something is complete, let's say we check it off and it goes to complete. It then changes to the correct color that I want. Now let's add. Now that's so cool. That's so cool, right? So that's a good example of, of how to use JSON. Let's add a new field. Let's come up here and there's a few ways to add fields, right? We can go to all items and then we can add column here and let's do a text column and it'll be estimate or maybe we'll do um, a number column. Let's do a number column. Let's add a little complexity in there. It's going to be a money estimated cost. All right, so now we have a new field in here. Let's put some numbers in here. Let's do 100 uh, or let's say 1,000 for the total project, 10. We're not going to make it roll up or anything. Um, buy a ghost is 500. The meeting is 300. We're just putting random numbers in here. It's not going to add up correctly, but that's what we have right now. All right, so we have some numbers in here. Now, when we go to my Gantt chart and we hover over anything, it does not show the estimated cost. I want it to show. All right, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a look at something I like. So I like the way Batman looks. So you can see here we have assigned to Batman. We have that lined up just perfectly. So I'm going to find the assigned to. So assigned to user. So it's all of this area right here. All of this is assigned to. So element assigned to user. I'm going to take all of this area right here and I'm going to put a comma and I'm going to put it in here again. So we should see it twice, right? That's what we want to do. We want to see it twice. Preview. We now see assigned to in there twice, but the icon didn't come over, didn't come down yet. So maybe we'll actually, let's see here. We'll put that, we'll make sure task description is still last. Task description is still last. 
Okay, so task description is last. We've now duplicated the assigned to user. So that's good. So go back to our code. So instead of assigned to user, right, we have it in here twice. I want this to be estimated cost estimated cost right here estimated cost no dot title okay and the icon where's the icon icon name money so we have now if we take a look at that we've now added a new field to our JSON and it's called estimated cost so I'm going to copy all this we need to make sure that when we edit view in Gantt chart that our field is available. So our field is available in the view, not just in all items view, but it's also available in our Gantt chart view. So make sure that your field is available. Is it here? Oh, in my Gantt chart. We need to make sure that our field is available, estimated cost in our Gantt chart view, and then exit grid view. So it's available now. Now I'm going to select all, paste, preview, hover over, there it is. We've now added a field to Hertz card. So you can see we now have estimated cost with a little money symbol, 10. We could probably put like a dollar sign there or something if we wanted to. But to me, that looks pretty good. I like the look of it. That's how you would add a new field. So just use his just use his JSON right here is one full element. So there's two parts to it. One is the icon. So this is the icon name. So you see this right here? This bracket down to this bracket is the icon. The next bracket to the next bracket from here to here is the text. So once you do that, you can add your own fields to your own cards. Thank you all for watching. My name is Andrew Hess, and I'll see you next time.